They're ready to get right into it. They're ready to get rumbling. All right, we got to get into the rumble. And honestly, before you even start out, I would love to just point out that other than the fact that it's PS2, what else don't you know about the kill? I mean, um, Banjo. Banjo. It's Banjo. It's Banjo. It's Banjo. It's Banjo. Now, I'm going to be honest. I'm really already excited to see a lot of the ways that we're going to start out seeing this match. And that was already a really good use of Spin Dash or um, Grenade to stop that Spin Dash coming in. And that's already starting out for a little bit of damage. We're uh -oh. starting out. Oh, oh. What happened? The, did you not see the mushroom? Oh, <laughs> they had items on. <laughs> this was because they was messing around. <laughs> they was messing around before the game. They was on a Pokemon Stadium. <sighs> what a goon. What a, a goon squad alert. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, boy. They got to change the rule set. We can see. I know, so, I like the little crowd coming up in the back here. We see uh, I can recognize uh, some of the Philly talent that has come all the way up here from oh. uh, from from Philly. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, we see Momo. We see Joshathan. Uh, I think I, uh, Sweshy is all, is actually in this pool right now Ooh. playing their set, as well as other New Jersey killers like Mateo. Mm -hmm. And in the crowd that we saw, uh, we see Jonathan Delta Force. So. Well, despite some, uh, despite some of bracket like falling mm -hmm. by the wayside one way or the other, the amount of mm -hmm. talent that's still here is absolutely precedent. But it does give a chance for some players like these two in this losers bracket to make a bit of a run all the way through top sixteen. Absolutely, and speaking of running, that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing a lot of running, but only you know about twenty-eight to seventeen percent doing on the board right now. And I was really excited. I was like, McKillie's going to do something new for us. I don't know what he's doing right now, but I, I already love it because we're starting a little bit of a ladder with that um, going on right here. Having your nice grenade to pull out a little bit of the few tricks right now. And let's see how that's going to go for this while because we're still going back and forth for a little bit. 51% to 25, and we're having a little bit of a corner fight, a little bit of a dog fight, or bear fight, I would like to say. Yeah, I like how Bakelis is really trying to focus on trying to limit Sonic space, not rushing in too deep, not trying to overextend uh, basically at all, and letting the Briegel Blaster do what it's intended to do, uh, and apply this, apply this space across the board. But missing the two frame with that down tilt though, instead just playing in round to the corner, but the quick spin, dar spin charge into back air. Sonic Fiend making use of the wide breadth of PS2 to cover so much space at such a quick amount of time. Okay, wait, that would have been sick. Though. That would have been sick. so crazy. <laughs> Alright, still plenty of space to play with though. Running straight in is Bakilis, but ending up falling victim to the scramble. Ooh, I, was, I don't know how much I appreciated that from Sonic Fiend and the gamble that they took going for an edge guard is going to pay them back in it. A really huge way. Bakuli's fall, uh, getting that down smash and is sitting on kind of pretty. Sometimes Sonic can struggle closing out stocks if you're not landing exactly back air or forward smash. So better hope that you find one of those soon because this bear is looking to it's looking to pitch a ten. And speaking of that, I just really love the way that we're having a little bit of the setup coming on. You know, I feel like what we're looking at right now is we're starting to see how Bakilis actually wants to go about making this wall, but that ball is going to be broken in a matter of seconds and taking off that stock, making it pretty even for sure. And I would really love to see how they kind of go about making sure that they continue to hit up this wall because once you put up that wall, we already know that it's going to make it infinitely that much harder to go in at Sonic. Yeah, again, one of those eggs to intercept, but Sonic Fiend ready for it with the jab. Bouncing back and forth, on not letting uh, not letting Bakulis pin them down. Instead, either trying just to get to the other side of the stage very quickly, or find cheeky reversals of, off of spin charts. I love that spin dash usage. You're landing onto the platform in order to extend it further. The up smash whiffs, though. It's like little things that are falling falling by the wayside for Sonic Fiend, missing just that little bit of extra damage or that little bit of extra momentum that can come from any individual hit, but the patience is certainly there. Absolutely, and this is where we're starting to see a little bit of the issue now. When we were looking at the first stock that went on, you know, we were seeing a little bit of an early stock coming in from Bakilis, but this is might be what Bakilis needs to be able to take this lead back from Sonic Fiend if they want to be able to win this set. So I would be really... You know, sure to hope and see if we can find a little bit of an early stock right now because it's definitely the golden percent. Uh, 
instead just going and setting up for the back throw. And I can, I really agree here. Banjo's raw hit kill power, especially off of things like throws or just throwing out that Wonder Wing down throw, up tilt. There it is. All right. That raw kill power off of throws and off of setups that can be off of those down throws can make the difference here. If so Like we saw before, living until 170 throughout these enti the entirety of the first stock. And if you're able to do that again, your stock mileage going so, so far, mm -hmm. that's going to be a thorn in Sonic Feet's side for the entirety of this best of five set. Absolutely. And speaking of that, this is exactly where we need to see a little bit of a little bit of more well-placed advantage situations from Sonic Fiend if they want to be or he wants to be able to kind of keep this as even as a game as possible. We need to see being able to, you know, keep Bakilis in the corner, making sure that Bakilis is not having as many chances to get back to center stage as possible. Gotta keep an eye on those Wonder Wings. Only one left. Look hunting for the roll there with that forward smash, I assume. As another great parry comes in and Sonic Fiend slowly getting whittled away. I love that up be either looking for a back air, but making the homing attack go wild as well. Like sitting at 188, beating their personal best, and the last one. Oh, no way! Oh, all right. Okay, but Killy, I thought this was going to be a very slow match. And looking at how this first was. game went, <laughs> let's, let's be honest, let's be honest. It was already starting, out, looking out to be starting a really slow match. But the way that Bakilis just took that first game was absolutely incredible. Going for that down air. But speaking of good stocks, we have this one here. I think this was when they went for the down throw. It's yes. up tilt. Yeah, that's that a, really that, well. That's a pretty clean setup. I want to point out what happened on the first stock and on the last stock. This, uh, okay, okay, so we start with the first stock. Right here, you know, resetting video. You're able to get back. Uh, advance it just a little bit. Keep on going. Keep on going. We'll play at a normal speed and then pause. Right here, a couple 10 frames back. Mm -hmm. Sonic Fiend, maybe maybe a few more. Sonic Fiend is up being uh, inverted in order to land a back here, here. Super quickly. Now, uh, show us the last stock super quick. Maybe? Three. Guess not. Okay, <laughs> we're fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. But, but the point is, Sonic Fiend is, has been getting greedy, both going off stage prematurely, mm -hmm. sometimes rewarded, sometimes not but more obviously has been up being in a reverse state to avoid grabbing ledge and to land a back air and come back on either aggressively. I mean, it could be back air, it could be spin charge, homing attack, etc. Sonic gets a lot of mileage off that, but every character has potent counterplay to that situation by just throwing out a hitbox early. And Banjo's got, while Banjo's maybe a little bit sluggish on the move, his hitboxes are strong. He has a big freaking fist that he just knocks people in the face with. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine just getting hit in the face by a big old bear. Not even big. This, this bear this is small. Like, this normal sized bear. <laughs> <laughs> this human sized bear is rocking people in the face and yeah. I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, not to mention the bird on his back functioning as a disjoint in a lot of those uh, cheeky moves like with that up air challenge on the homing attack mix up. Uh, still, this back throw on Town and City is going to do it. 84% on the part of Sonic Bean, but Bakili's behind the eight ball early in this game, as they were in game one, but they were able to turn that around pretty effectively by making some very, very poignant callouts. See if we can come back, come back to that game plan again, or if Sonic Fiend is able just to dominate the stage and dominate the clock as well. Absolutely, and very nice mash getting out of there at 105%. And this is where, again, I was hoping to point out, because the thing is, is that Bakilis is using the grenade and throwing it down. I'd really like to see that use of getting whatever that was supposed to be. That looked like it was supposed to kill, and it didn't kill. What's going on here? That's a yeah, real big shame there for Bakilis. Finally making the call out on homing attack, letting Sonic Fiend just run all back and forth across the stage of town and city. And you finally go for the stock, and it just doesn't it doesn't work. It's <laughs> like, like, oh, so close, so close. And we're seeing the snowball effect that comes in with exactly that, that up smash closing Ooh. out the stock. Bakuli's looking, uh, looking for some answers here, and Sonic Fiend looking like they have really understood what went wrong in game one and battered down the hatches. Absolutely. What we're needing to see here is a little bit more of reserving this from Bakilis, and they're going to get that up smash into the kill at 168%. But this yep. is really what we need here. Bakilis is at 20%, and they need to find some way to be able to do some damage to Sonic Fiend and still keep that 20% on the board because that's the only way they're going to be able to control neutral, control the you know disadvantage on you know their end. And what he's doing right now is trying to pull a little bit of the you know the, the buttons out. 
pull something out to be able to get that to working right now. Yeah. Gotta make a play. Gotta make a call. I love the no spin dash there from Sonic Bean. Most of the time when they end up just charging up the spin dash or the spin charge, they end up releasing it in some form. Mm -hmm. Just not doing it is sometimes much more prevalent and much more important because then you get the chance of like, th then you add on to the mix-ups. You add on to the layers of like, hey, mm -hmm. you don't just have to worry about how fast I'm going. You got to worry about if I'm coming at all. <laughs> Speaking of. <laughs> That was really though. funny, just rolling there two times, not really knowing if Sonic Queen wants to hit that spin dash, but that back throw is going to send Bakilis right back on stage, and he's definitely needing some answers right now. That down throw isn't going to do anything yet, but still looking for something, and this is this is looking like a little bit of a fluster right here, a little bit of a chicken fight. Who's going to crack first? Because whatever is going on right now is just Bakilis trying so hard to find the kill, and it's not really working out. Such a shame, losing the opportunity off that whiff homing attack, and it falls back into favor of Sonic Fiend, back into their control, and back uh, game into their corner as well. Getting that 1-1, one, one, that forward smash, leading into a, a tied best of five. And Jazzy, we've got a long way to go in this set. This is a we just have a little bit of a long way. These wow. two players are just acting so defensively mm -hmm. in terms of their prowess, finding small openings and trying to take them a long way. Mm -hmm. But it's really come down to just like couple hits, neutral. Couple hits, neutral. And Absolutely. Ooh. Can I point out one thing? Fire away. You know, honestly, I don't know if we can get the camp player cams on, so I can point it out. Look, look at, look at Sonic Fiend. Just pause it. I'm gonna pop. That's not pausing it. What's going on here? Oh my god. Okay. No. See, just look. You know, honestly. What am I looking at? It's real we're looking. Time. We're looking at Sonic Fiend specifically. Just Sonic Fiend. Okay. Exclusively Sonic. Fiend. You know, I don't know if it makes sense that the Sonic in Sonic Fiend makes this, you know, understandable. Of course, he's a Sonic Fiend. But yes. just look at look at the drip. Look at the swag. He does look, look good. at the look at all the ice this boy got on him. Look and at the hat. I don't know. There's not that much ice, but I'm telling you, got the shades. Look at icy. I just want to point that out because that's the only thing nice I really want to say about. <laughs> whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa! whoa. <laughs> I just, about any any of these two characters. I don't know. Sonic that's... is cool when he wants to be. I... And this is not one of those times. I will say that. Sometimes, especially when you get deeper and deeper into bracket, Sonic just both of these characters like they have to resolve themselves to a specific game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, Banjo with a it's technically mid-range, but it's very, very like defensive-oriented, very dash-back heavy in order to try and find poignant whiff punishes off of your item play, etc., etc. And Sonic can make the whiff punish length, his burst range, basically be the whole stage. That's just how the character can operate, but you do have to watch out for Wonder Wing after Wonder Wing, waiting for the back airs, trying to get the drag down for it instead after reading the air dodge. But Bakulis misses the full length of that potential punish. And instead, we're sitting back at a largely even game. Oh, but it's turning the tables right away as Bakulis finds double grenade into the Wonder Wing. Super nice stuff. Absolutely. That was a very nice first dot coming in from Bakulis. And I really want to make sure that we point out how well Bakulis is holding this center stage, making it so hard for Sonic Fiend to be able to huh. get back to center stage. We're seeing so much of the grenade play that's being into use, and that smash is not going to take it. That was just a really, oh, throw it out there, Fist. I don't know. Yeah. But just Strongly. the way that the backer's going to do it. Yes. Yeah. You're, but you're able to live a forward smash from center stage at a little bit earlier. I mean, Hollow Bastion with those empty blast zones will help that uh, that survivability in all directions. Mm -hmm. But uh, you, you can't always take the punishment. Just as a big Wonder Wing comes in for uh, Bakuli, is able to slowly but surely just maintain presence on this platform. But the percents are so even that it's hard to tell who can really be, who can really kind of force the opponent to approach right now as they are literally tied at percent, only five, only half a percent differentiating. They're now no longer. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure, I really feel like the only thing that's going to really keep this in Bakuli's favor is Bakuli's actually understands 
how to make sure they're just using the grenade to their advantage. Because look at him. Just having this really good, strong advantage, and that's only going to help so much more if you just use that grenade as a wall. Again, like we were saying from the first game, to be able to hold that center stage, to be able to hold a lot of, you know, the make it very, you know, small how many um, approaches Sonic Team has to his disposal. This is definitely what we need to make it a little bit of an even gain. And right now, that is going to be where we see that fist knock Sonic Fiend out of the ring and losing their second stock on their last stock and trying to go for something more. It's looking a little scary right now because I don't know if people be knowing how scary the bear can be sometimes, but this bear, Jazzy, Ooh. the amount of damage that Bacchus has put on just by Sonic Fiend getting a little bit desperate. You, could, you can see it in the idea right there. They're not getting punished. But just looking for the lead that'll close out the stock, looking for the big finisher, um, whether it be off of ledge, on the platform, in center stage, it's always hunting for the play that'll make the difference in the entire game. And sometimes, especially in matchups like this, you gotta chill out. You gotta take it a little bit slower, you gotta relax those nerves and move to what Bakulis gives you. He's in the leading position, so you've got to answer and respond rather than try and ask the questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, but we're still seeing this really nice lead coming in from Achilles, trying to get something off of that lead trap situation, not getting anything, but still in a very nice lead with 98% on the board on Sonic Fiend, and Achilles is trying to take this last dog and bring it home. We're definitely seeing something right here. That S match is going to take it, losing that second stock, but we're still in a very scary situation for Sonic Man at 111%. Still needs to put on so much more damage before he needs to even be able to take this game. And this is looking really scary. It it very much is, Jackie. Yeah, yeah. And it, like it gets it gets more and more worrisome oh. with every passing egg. That confirm was so nice. And again, catching Sonic Fiend in a uh, catching Sonic in general in a very mm -hmm. very uh, in a strong but exploitable position. The charge up of Spin Dash. As also, we get it, that's just a nice combo. Like let's look, just, look, I, nice. wanna, I, I definitely want to look at that. Can we go back to that first yeah. combo? Uh, nothing to nothing to write. Nothing to okay. really see and show. But man, this was nice. Just <laughs> look at it. Just look at it. Just look at it. You know, like look at that and then. That was just a really good use, and the only way that Bakuza was able to get here was from that use of Grenade. He spin-charged. Sonic players have one thought, and that's that I want to curl up into a ball. <laughs> Unfortunately, going through the remainder of the stocks and just a very nice bit of play overall from Bakuza in so many uh, strong positions where it's like, I'm going to let you spin-charge. That entire game can almost be summarized in, hey, you want to spin-dash, Sonic Fiend. I know you do because you're, you play Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. Ergo, I'm going to take the, those moments, mm -hmm. take those moments where you're charging, and instead of thinking, oh, you're charging a move, I should be prepared, instead, that's, hey, Sonic is standing still, I can mm -hmm. go on the attack. Yes, absolutely. And again, when it comes to Wonder Wing, people don't know how strong Wonder Wing very, is sometimes. Very good and especially move. on a stage like this, this is definitely where we're going to see Wonder Wing putting in a lot of effort or use for Bakilis if Bakilis can stay in the lead right now. Trying to pull a little something into it, getting that nice F smash, putting Bakilis right back off stage and only has one Wonder Link left. And if they use it one more time, this is going to be how hard is it going to be for Bakilis to end this dock off? Yeah, excellent point there, Jazzy. As we can see, um, we can see Baku is trying to hold on to that last Wonder Wing as much as possible. That's the mid-range threat that is constantly making Sonic Fiend uh, decide early on how they want to use Spin Dash. Uh, without that Wonder Wing, or without much use of that Wonder Wing left at their disposal. Sonic Fiend is fine, was able to just <laughs> take it easy and take it slow, knowing that it was either bang or bust when it came to the use of that side B. Of course, with the stock dropped, Bakos has five more at their disposal, but you're also at a deficit, which is never where you want to be against Sonic. Absolutely. This is going to make it so much harder for Bakilis to be able to hold a lead if they can't get the kill first and they need to stop getting a little bit desperate. I understand the counterpick state, or the counterpick state on Sonic Fiends, and, and in theory, it should be so much better for Bakilis, but Bakilis is getting a little bit too anxious trying to get that kill, and it's not helping that when you're using all of your Wonder Wings, it just becomes a little bit too predictable about how you're going to be able to take that kill off, and that's exactly how oh, that was going to be take over the kill. 
but we are going to see the stock being evened up on Bacillus' end, 48% to zero, and I'm hoping to see that we can see a little bit more, you know, on Sonic Queen's end to continue this lead, because they did have a really good lead, but they do need something to kind of give it that, that little, that little spice, give it a little spicy flavor, you know. Yeah, I feel that, Jazzy. It's just the, the presence that uh, Sonic Fiend has on this stage particularly has been extremely, extremely good. Like, understanding that the... Understanding and knowing how to utilize the extra width, the platform layouts, and the, the variety that those can provide. But Bakulis is still hanging around, and that was only the first Wonder Wing used. Has a lot of rage and a lot of determination here sitting at their shoulders. Looking for some of that extra spice with that down air. I wonder if that mm -hmm. was like spiking down air up tilt maybe. Wouldn't have closed out the stock given Town and City, but hey, anything to answer back to Sonic Fiend's uh, uh, presence on this stage and able to come, cut down the distance and find that back air is Sonic Fiend though. Establishing that lead and making sure to hold it. Absolutely. And again, here's where we're seeing the issue. We're seeing the issue of Achilles having such a hard time. This was the oh. same issue that was present in that second game on Sonic Fiend's end, being able to take that stock. And this is might be something we have to see be a little bit of a counter-break option in the future for Bakilis in Game 5, perhaps, maybe? Because right now, where it's looking at, it's definitely looking like um, Bakilis is having a little bit of a hard time. But that is not to say that this game isn't going to end. That up tilt should not have closed out the stock. I know it had the red sparks. I know it had the and, and the uh, the stock was actually dropped, but you could see it on Sonic Fiend's face. If you saw my face, you could have seen it on mine. That up tilt shouldn't have closed out the stock, and and Sonic Fiend getting not massively punished, still on, in a very strong position, but very very it's making it a lot closer than it necessarily has to be, keeping Bakus in spitting distance of this game. I mean, ooh, it gets more and more dangerous with every passing second. The damage getting racked on ever so slowly. Looking for the jabs, just trying to go for the gentleman, but missing the final hit. Jazzy, do you think Sonic Fiend is going, needs to slow it down here or try and regain a little bit of that momentum? Because it feels like Sonic Fiend is starting to swing real big right now. Absolutely, and this is the thing too, because when we're seeing, you know, Bakili's in these disadvantageous positions, What's uh -oh. going on here? Oh no, okay, yeah, going, we're good. Going for a big read there, but Sonic Fiend not giving to him. Instead of letting, letting the Banjo having to run you down. Again, uh -oh. going for it all there. Trying to go for it all, and this is where we're seeing a thing. We saw in that second stock of Achilles, Achilles was trying to put a little bit of distance between him and Sonic Fiend, and it wasn't working out too well because what Sonic Fiend did was just take that, you know, um, took that all that space that you know Sonic Fiend had to just use it and be able to close out that second stop. We need to make sure that we're putting on as much you know pressure as possible while still having as much of the center as possible to be able to close out the stops. And is this gonna kill? This is absolutely gonna kill, making this a game five situation between Sonic Fiend and Bakilis. Very, very well played on the part of Sonic Fiend and uh, honestly on the part of both sides here. Bakilis was down early made a, a the snowball effect with sonic was starting to really come into play but they kept a good they kept a firm head they kept their momentum they kept the momentum on their side uh and they on they kept their nerves in check mo probably most importantly not letting sonic fiend fall into fall into a rhythm of bouncing back and forth and watching the opponent chase as sonic fiend gets a little bit of a pop off in his normal Sonic Fiend way. Does he does he snap here? He snaps here, yeah. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> I love it. That's a it's quintessential Sonic Fiend. If if no one has ever played this man in bracket before, uh, which I have twice, every time he lands a spin charge into a forward air, he snaps. Every time. And, and it gets to you. It can get to you. It can. <laughs> it can get to you, but Sonic Green just has so much charisma as a player. Yes. But you know, that's just that's just what makes Sonic Green so different. Just look at him, so quirky. Yes. But we the are gonna come off. Yes, we're absolutely going back to Hollow Bastion, and this is where we might have to see a little bit of a little bit of you know adaption coming on from Sonic Fiend in this game five situation. You know, I really liked how Sonic Fiend it was able to control that game for the most part, taking advantage of how Achilles was being a really you know impatient sometimes, trying to slow it down a little bit but not really using it too well. And this might be what is the deciding factor of this last game that you know indecisiveness. 
indecisiveness. That indecisiveness not wanting to be able <laughs> to go in or being able to choose the right, you know, um, option going in. Um, but Gillies needs to be able to solidify what they want to do and just go for it because all of this is making it so hard Ooh. and that S smash is going to trade with that forward air on their end making still a little bit of an even situation right now. Gonna get that Wondering to go back to stage, but this is still entirely scary. We're having a little bit of a really good position, but, you know. Yeah, it's a tight game to be sure, but I really like the way that Bakuli seems much more comfortable playing around this platform. Actually, being able to have this consistent platform to change elevation from where you play against Sonic, whether by jumping on top or dropping through, can dramatically change how Sonic Fiend has to commit to their offense. And but in this early game where it is so imperative, you need to find a lead as Sonic before you're able to start playing the runaway game and Sonic Fiend dropping that lead that they had going for them, letting Bakuli's hold on to this stage control game and hold on to that lead. In a game five scenario here, Jazzy, like there's no more mistakes, no more uh, flexibility that you can have in this game. Like Sonic Fiend has got to both call, like never, don't force it, but he has to find an opening. Absolutely, and that opening is what's going to be able to solidify this last game and how even it is going to be. If we can see Sonic Fiend take a little stock, is that back going to do it? It is not going to do it just entirely yet. 164% tacking on damage with that Wondering at 39%. Sonic Fiend needs to find something because they are slowly, slowly losing this what was a very even game at the beginning. Yeah, letting it slowly be dragged out from between their fingers. The game you can make the game may progress at this pace, but better believe it, Sonic Fiend is feeling every second like it's a mile. Both of these players are, as the last Wonder Wing drops on the part of Achilles. 56% although on Sonic Fiend. All of each and every one of those Wonder Wings found so much opportunity to in order to extend this uh, this stock lead and extend the life that Bakulis has going for them. But the forward tilt finally at close to 190 drops the stock. Yet there is so much more to go, especially with these grenade placements so well done on the part of Bakulis to cover their corner pressure and to stop Sonic Bean from being aggressive out of said corner. Absolutely, and that was the thing I wanted to point out in the beginning too, because this is exactly what is going to be the deciding factor of this game. How well Bakulis uses that grenade, and are we going to see this kill? That kill is going to come in and granting a little bit of a new lease on life from Achilles right here. This is exactly what Achilles needs to be able to hold a lot of his advances right here, this really good lead. And it's just looking so much of a hard hill to climb for Sonic Fiend. Sonic Fiend has to find an answer, has to find an early stock. And I don't know how they're actually going to do that in this position right now. They're almost, you know, laughing and present at this point. Uh, very, very close to it here, Jazzy. I, man, the, the answer, I feel like, comes in you need to get Bakuis to burn his Wonder Wings, first and foremost. After that, it comes with an edge guard. It comes with some extended offstage play. Frequently, Bakuis, uh, when recovering from so far deep, they had been going for it, and Sonic Bean was prepared for the side B then, but it did not come out in time. Instead, just it didn't come out at all, as Bakuis is playing, playing the will-they-won't-they they game so very well here as well as the extended platform uh, vertical camping. <laughs> Absolutely. This is exactly what Bakilis needs to do. Bakilis does not need to do anything at this point, and it's definitely looking like it could be a done deal if Sonic Fiend doesn't know what to do, just slowly chipping damage at 69%. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> try to do a little bit of something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Trying to maintain their own percentage. They're, they're feeling the magic. They're feeling the, the luster. And so far, Sonic Fiend is kind of flirting with disaster, especially if they really wanted to go off stage there with one of those back airs. Not finding it has to recover. Man, Baku has missed the potential uh, corner pressure there, uh, potential edge guard as well. But still, you can take this game at your pace and at your tempo. The clock is your friend, but so is all of these missed techs from Sonic Fiend, missing it on that platform and getting a big chunk of damage there. Baku is in just firm control, and I feel like this is this is the example of how uh, of how Banjo can take a game and really wrestle it into his own fists, into his own claws, even, and turn a game on its head and shut down your Absolutely. opponent. 
in that end there, it was just spiraling out of control so hard for Sonic Fiend. Just super hard. But that is going to be the deciding factor that um, nice wondering to take off that sock. That was all that Bakili's needed. And just ending it right there. Yeah. Well played throughout the set, honestly. Like These two had a very clean sense of how much they wanted to push in each given moment. But what failed in terms of Sonic Fiend in these final moments, especially in stock two, was wanting to keep the game even at a moment's notice. And he fell into just, hey, I'm going to go edge guard you and get hit by Wonderwing while you're recovering. Hey, I'm going to go and try and attack you with an up air. And gets hit by a grenade. And it's those little moments of trying to force their way into a game state that they're more comfortable in, which only led to yet more and more whiff punishes and more and more strong moments like this. Whoa. With, yeah. Look with, at it. Look at him. He's, he's rearing up. Both of them, there even. Oh. Yeah, Sad. I mean, dropping at, 70, uh, dropping at 96 is certainly early, but I feel like this is a perfect example of what I'm looking for, what, I, uh, what I'm really saying when it came to how Bakus was able to exploit Sonic Fiend. Sonic Fiend going for the standard stuff, going for the, I need a stock here, so I'm going to charge forward smash at ledge, but you're... In, in turn of doing that, you're disrespecting Banjo's unique options, and you're disrespecting the tools and the uh, situation that Bakus has put you in, and that you've, you're put, you've put yourself in. And in turn, Bakus was able to take advantage of that multiple times throughout the set, and at the very end, for the W. Absolutely. Well, again, that was a very nice match, but we are going to have to get some ads in before we get to see the Scion versus Delta Force. And y'all know oh, I love me so